Okay, so the one thing that I care that you write somewhere on your paper is the following. I want you to put somewhere on your paper what's behind the screen that you can't see right now, but basically that less than and greater than is a dotted line. Somewhere on your paper, the margin, above, below. I also want you to put that less than or equal to or greater than or equal to is then the solid line. And then what I put over on the board on the right. And that was when I have greater than That generally means that the shading is above, it's to the right, it's higher than the line. When you have a less than, It means that you've got, generally, it's on the left side, or the shading is below, or the shading is under the line. So that's our job for today. We first need to decide, is it going to be a solid line or a dotted line? And then we ask ourselves, do I shade above it, below it, left, right? Okay? <coughs> All right. So really and truly, what's here is not important to me, but the definitions are. Okay? So I have the definitions, and so basically let's write them down. We're doing linear inequalities, so we don't have an equal sign at all for any of our words today or any of our math problems. <coughs> Linear inequality is graphing a line with shading and it has tons of solutions. The shaded region means that's where all the answers are. That's where all the ordered pairs are <laughs> that plug in all the solutions. So our next vocab word is solution. Um, I prefer you write this definition down, okay? The ordered pair that works which also mean plugs in <coughs> to the inequality. Your ordered pair that plugs into the inequality. In this graph that you have there, this line is our <coughs> solid line. And do you notice how the shading is under? What that means is these points that were picked, 0, 0 and 2, negative 1, those red dots, those red dots are solutions to my inequality because they're in the shaded region. If it's shaded, that's where all the answers are, the ordered pairs that you can plug in. So you want to have a shaded region. It'll have a lot of ordered <laughs> pairs in it. And those will be all your solutions, all your things that you can plug in for x comma y into your inequality. <laughs> all right, so let's start with number one. Number one is simply check whether the ordered pair is a solution. It's a yes or no question. Yes, it does plug in or no, it does not plug in, okay? 
so here we go. Plug in 0 comma 0. Remember, it's x comma y, right? 2 times 0 minus 3 times 0 is greater than or equal to negative 2. Plug in x, 0. Plug in y, 0. So, do the math now. 2 times 0, 0. Minus 3 times 0, 0. Greater than or equal to negative 2. Is 0 greater than or equal to negative 2? That's So yes or no? Is 0 bigger than negative 2? Yes. Yes. Let's say that you're still confused and you really don't know. Look at the number line. So the number line's on the side of the board, right? So you look at the number line. And you look at 0 and you look at 2. Look at negative 2. Anything that's on the right side or higher or bigger, that means that it's greater. Is 0 greater than? Yeah, 0 is right here. Negative 2 is right here. Yeah, 0 is bigger. Yes. So it's yes. The answer to A is yes. Same thing for B. Plug it in, plug it in. I'll do it in blue. 2 times 0 minus 3 times 1 is greater than or equal to negative 2. Okay. 0 minus 3 is greater than or equal to negative 2. Well, 0 minus 3, that's negative 3. Is negative 3 greater than negative 2? Look no. at the number line. Okay, whatever number's on the right side, those are the bigger numbers. So no, it's not. Zero, negative one is not a solution. Or it's a positive one, sorry. Zero, one would not be in the shaded part. Zero, one would be in the white part, not the shaded part. <laughs> All right, C. Um, does two for x and negative one for y plug in? <laughs> Do the math real quick. 2x minus 3y greater than or equal to negative 2. Four. Now what is this negative 3 times negative 1? Plus. Is 7 greater than or equal to negative 2? Yes or no? Yes. Yes, it is. Good. Okay. It's a yes-no question. You're <laughs> plugging it in. We didn't graph at all on this problem. The graph starts on... Now, these directions... I'm going to give you ones that I actually like the phrasing better. <laughs> so um, let's start with number two. Number two is just what I did, you know, remember with my five, negative five, right? Okay. It's on x and it's at negative two. So tell me, is my, is my dot going to be on the x axis or the y axis? X axis. X axis. Oh, this is all mixed up. Y. Okay. Negative two. Let's do it in red so you can really see it. <coughs> Make a dot at negative 2, right there. X-axis at negative 2. Now tell me, will my line be horizontal or will my line be vertical? Vertical. Vertical? Okay, but be careful. Because remember this. <coughs> and that's so bad. That's better. Will my line be dashed or solid? Dashed. 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 So you're going to have to make your line either on the side of it, because you don't have red, you know. It's going to be vertical. Okay. Now I have to worry about the shading. What does this symbol say right here? My little red arrow. What does that say? <laughs> Less than. Less than. So what side of my line is less? Left. The left. 
Your shading can be like this. Your shading can just be lines. But the point is, any ordered pair that's in the shaded region in the red is a solution to my inequality there. <laughs> okay. Try number three on your own. Good. Okay. Dotted one, solid line. Is he right so far with the solid line? <laughs> hey, class, yeah. is he right with the solid line or should it be dashed? Yeah, he's right. Okay. And the shading, it says, what does it say? Greater than or less than? Greater than. Okay, so shade greater than. Okay. Do you agree with him? Yeah. Yes. I do too. I think that's great. Good job. We just did that. Plus B. It's not. In Y equals MX plus B. Okay. So, the rules for putting something. The X needs to be moved over. The Y needs to be all by itself on the left. Right after my inequality sign or my equal sign goes my <laughs> MX plus B. So, what is my... What is um, the first step for this one? <coughs> to get it in Y equals MX plus B. Subtract the X from one side to the other. Okay. So now I'm going to have Y, but I don't want to write 3 minus X. Because remember, I need it MX plus B. So I need that 3... Uh, at the end, and so where should I put my negative x? You've already helped. Okay, I'm going to put a one there just in case someone needs that clarification. Plus three, because if you'll remember, this is m slope. This is B. Begin. B is where you begin on your graph. The Y intercept. My M is negative 1 over 1. That's my slope. My B is 3. Okay. On your graph. Let's do it together. Begin at 3. Begin at 3. It's your Y intercept. So you go to the y-axis at 3. Make a dot at 3 right there. And then I need to do my slope. Rise over run. Rise negative 1, run 1. Rise negative 1, run positive 1 to the right. Down 1 over 1. Down 1 over 1 and so on and so forth. Should I do a dotted line or a solid line? Look at your inequality. If it's just less than, greater than, dashed line. If it's less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, solid. So is this dashed or solid? Okay. Do your best to make the dashed line. And now check this out right here. Does that say greater than or less than? Look at what I'm focusing on. Greater than. What's greater than my line? Where is greater than this blue line? Okay. Greater than the blue line. Look at the words from before. It's either above it, it's to the right of it, or it's higher. To the right of it. So which... Because I heard somebody say below, so that, that made me nervous, because it's not under it. It's going to all be right here. Okay? There's all your shading.
right, let's go to number five. Okay, number five. 2x plus y is greater than 6. Okay, go ahead and do it on your own. Okay, she began at 6, then she went down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1. She's now making a dotted line. Now, does that say greater than or less than? Greater than. So she needs to shade greater than the line. Is she right? Yeah. Yeah, she is. Okay, remember how I was asking you to do number 6 while she was doing number 5? Okay, so you're maybe halfway done with number six? Oh, okay, I guess I'm just jumping to number six. <sighs> okay, hold on. Okay, number six. So I have a volunteer to do the math and draw the graph. Okay, take a look at what she did. She changed the inequality right here. Perfect. Now less than this line. Be careful. Look at how the line is tilted and you need to remember that the line's gonna go on forever and ever. Where's less than the line going to be? It will not be on the left. This is one of those times when not all the words work. Lower than the line, under the line. Where is that? It's on the right. So this means, look at that. I mean, isn't that under the line? Isn't that lower than the line? So... Now that word left is kind of like, uh, it doesn't work for every single problem. Be careful with that. Okay? Use your common sense or pick an ordered pair. Let's pick a green dot in the shaded area. How about this one? <coughs> Four comma zero. You can pick an ordered pair in the shaded region and decide whether it plugs in. Let's try it. Nine times four minus 3 times 0 is greater than or equal to 18. 9 times 4 is what? 36. 36. 3 times 0 is nothing. It's greater than or equal to 18. Is 36 greater than or equal to 18? Yes. Yes. That means that 4 comma 0 plugs in to my equation and works. Yes. And it's in the shaded area. Yes. So it's a solution. Everything looks good about this. Okay, on the last problem, that one-fourth and that one-half, do you remember, gosh, I think back to maybe September, October, how to get rid of the fractions. I don't want to work with fractions. What can I do to this math problem to get rid of the fractions? Not reciprocal, because then it's like, well, which reciprocal? What number would I choose? So let's not do that. Another idea? Multiply by the common denominator. Multiply every term by the common <laughs> denominator. Okay. So I'm going to write it so it's a little bit 
more spaced out. What's the common denominator of 4 and 2? 4. Common denominator of 4 and 2 is 4. <coughs> okay. Common denominator of 4 and 2 is what? Common denominator of 4 and 2. 4. Okay. That means I'm going to... And I'm going to do 4 over 1 so that you think it looks a little more convenient for you. Multiply every term by 4 over 1. Now we cross cancel. So we cross cancel to get rid of the fractions. Did everybody put times 4 over 1 times 4 over 1 times 4 over 1? Okay. Now I'm going to cross cancel in black. The 4's cancel. 4 goes into 4 one time. Next, the 2 and the 4. 2 goes into 2 once. How many times does 2 go into 4? And then 1 times 4 here at the end will just be 4. Okay. <coughs> Starting here. 1 times 1x. One 1x. One Next one. 2 times 1y. 2 times 1y. 2y. Less than 1 times 4? Four? 4. Now the fractions are gone. Now I put it in y equals mx plus b. What's the first step? New people. I don't want to hear from the same voices all period. First step. What's the first step? Subtract 1x. Subtract. Okay, thank you. Subtract 1x. 2y is less than, and then right after the less than symbol, put negative 1x plus 4. Put the x term immediately after. Okay, <coughs> and how do I get rid of the 2? Divide by 2. Everything. Negative 1 half x, and then 4 divided by 2 is plus 2. Okay, graph that one on your own. And you're going to do problems number 16, number 30, number 32, number 50, and number 54. So from the textbook, you're doing those problems, and you're going to do the 1 through 4 that's just right there. That's classwork. So you have a good 10 minutes right now to get 1 through 4 done. And I won't project the book because there's not enough time, but um, go ahead and get started.